Hello everyone, this is Martin Rhymes. Can we do a sound check here? Can we please do a sound check? We're about to ready to get started here. It's 1230. Let me know that you can hear me. Super. Thank you, George, Carl, Bob. Thank you, thank you, Mike. Okay, appreciate that. All right, wonderful. Now, second question, can you see my chart of the ES? Can you see the chart of the ES? Good. Gosh, all right, wonderful. We're just... Uh, cooking with gas now. All right, <clears throat> so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to give this talk from a, uh, a uh, presentation that's already been created, and then we're going to switch over to some live charts and just uh, see what's going on with today. Now, I'm not surprised that the day's quite slow. In fact, I, we kind of knew this at the beginning in the morning when I sent my client email out. Uh, but without any further ado, let's get started. Okay. I want you to know that once I get involved in this discussion, I tend to not look at the questions. I want to answer every single question. So that means whatever it is you want to ask me, um, write it in there and I'll come back to it at the end. If you say something like, uh, what about this line? Well, you know, I'm not going to know what you're talking about. So be as specific as possible. All right? I just get so involved in talking that I just don't look at the question. Okay, here we go. I am Martin Rhymes from Hit the Mark Trading. That's a company that I formed. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. I want to thank Agena Trader. Uh, the commitment to trader education is greatly appreciated. And Agena Trader is going to launch this trader's yard that's in beta at this point. And I really look forward to contributing to trader's yard where I'm going to be posting some charts and different things. I need to express a disclaimer here. We are adults and we all know that trading financial instruments using contracts, stocks, and options is extremely risky. Only trade with money you can afford to place at risk. Past results do not guarantee future results. And please consult a licensed professional prior to trading using real money. Importantly, paper trade to learn any new concepts. Paper trade regardless of your level of expertise. Now, just briefly about me, I've been trading for over 25 years. Over 10 years full-time, I've got experience with stocks, options, bonds, futures. I don't really do the Forex. I do currencies through CME futures, okay, rather than pairs. But everything that I present is applicable whether you're a Forex trader or if you do the futures uh, on CME. I've had lots of uh, various indicators experience and uh, tr automated trading experience. I took, I took about a year off and I got a group of guys together and what we did was, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to stop trading for one year. We're going to investigate into this automated trading and we're just going to find out, you know, what is it all about? So I've got a lot of experience with that automating trading uh, arena. Now, I've spoken at various trading conferences, also provided numerous webinars for traders, promoting what I believe is a relaxed and simplified method for trading, including I've given the talk with the CME and ICE. All right, um, briefly, I started mentoring in 2008. Why? Well, because trading can be very lonely, quite honestly. And my background is sales and marketing and business development, so I'm used to talking to people and I like to help people. So I started doing this in 2008. Uh, I do a market update every single night for position trading, but it'll also talk about starting a trade as a day trade and if it works out, hold it overnight, that kind of thing. And I will supplement this with a video uh, if I'm going to highlight a trade. Uh, Educational trades are called in advance. That means we are working constantly from the right edge of the chart. And this is how we stay on top of the market. Um, for the weekend, I do an extensive review of all the futures, big time. 
And there we are looking at the bigger picture. Um, I've got some training courses available. One is Just Day Trade, very, very popular. I'm surprised at how popular this course is. But it's the uh, total intensive immersion for day trading. The boot camp was the first one I ever did. It is for position trading with some exposure to day trading, but if you are only interested in day trading, um, this six-hour intensive immersion is very popular. In fact, I think I'm going to hold one November 27, 28, and 29. November 27, 28, 29. And I'll be uh, working with the Agena uh, software in that course. Uh, back in 2004 and back in 2005, the day trading was absolutely beyond horrible. It was tight markets. And that's when I got into options trading because everything was so boring in the day trading, nothing moving. And it was like, okay, who's making money? And the people that were making money were people trading options non-directionally. So I really dug in big time in option trading. Okay, me and a Gina trader. Well, for the first time, everything that I, or the main things I do on day trading or position trading, I've worked with Gilbert at a Gina trader to put this as an add-on. So I, I think it's the ultimate trading assistant. Because you're going to monitor defined markets. It'll provide you trade signals on the chart. And it's uh, preloaded with your order entry, a soft stop, a hard stop, and a trailing stop if you want it. And all you do is just agree, okay, yeah, this makes sense, and click, you're in the trade. And it can even allocate as a money management tool. So it's quite uh, advanced. So this is me, your instructor, the guy talking to you now. This is the trading room at my house, okay? Just because you see five screens does not mean you need five screens, okay? I just, uh, that's just me. Now, if you want to see how I think, I really would like to see you sign up for Rooster Call, my free morning client email, okay? I give it to you free for like 30 days or so. All that means is you're going to go to the Hit the Mark Trading website. Let me show you how to do this. Here we are. Hit the Mark Trading. You're going to come up here to the contact page. And you're going to sign up here. Your, your name and email. That's all I'm asking for. Your name and email. And after you sign up, you'll be directed to where you can then sign up a second time for rooster car rooster call and now the question is well what is rooster call okay here's today's rooster call november 13 so i i wake up early and it'll take me an hour and a half for two hours sometimes to write this it will take you about two minutes to read it or less so for example i just started off without any significant hot button economic reports we have nothing of substance moving the market for today's trading Okay, so this is, this is your prep for the U.S. trading session. And then here's a little notice about, uh, here's a little notice if I can get my tool working here. Spotlight? No? Pin? No, okay. Tonight at 9 p.m., the world's second largest economy. They're, okay, they're going to issue some reports tonight, and I tell what those reports are. So it, it, what this is, it, it's what's going on in my head that I believe, in my opinion, should be important to mention. And I talk about the epic battle going on with CL. We, we witnessed this yes, last week, and it's going on today. Um, a little background on what I, what I believe is going on. Um, I do quote the Financial Times. I love the Financial Times, and I look at other sources as well. We switch to why the British pound has fallen in the overnight. We talk about GE. A giant stumbles, a giant falls. 
Um, and then I give you the steps of what typically happens when a giant stumbles and a giant falls, okay? So there are defined steps here. And if you're a stock trader or option trader, uh, there's money to be made in this as the company goes through this trying to pick itself up. And then I talk about a trade we put on in June called RIG. And it's uh, this is just today's email. But this is an option trade, okay? It's a grave dancing. And all we did here was say this RIG is so correlated to the price of crude, if crude will rise, then we know the stock will rise. So what do we do? We buy an option dated January 2019. So the, the idea is simple. If you think crude is going to rise in the next 500 days, then you should own rig because rig will rise too. And we made sure that these people had enough money to pay their bills for the, you know, for the next two years. So we're along the 10 strike call and the stock price is 1158 this morning. So we're in the money, okay? So it's just little little deals like that, uh, um, you know, little things that I think are interesting for trading. Uh, here's another stock we're in, BSMX, a Mexican too big to fail bank. Current yield over eight percent from where we got in. So this is just trading talk, trading talk, trading talk. Today's economics. There's nothing economic reports, and then a rundown of the current markets okay what's going on at the time that I'm looking at the charts okay uh, I mentioned coffee because we're expecting something in coffee okay absolutely um, just I think it'll help you I enjoy writing it my clients enjoy reading it so if you're interested to get this delivered to your mailbox um, again you're just going to go to hit the mark trading.com Go to the contact page, sign in, and um, you'll get it. Very good. Okay, let me get back to this. Back to what we're doing here. There's today's chart, by the way, the ES. So you can see what's going on that since 10 o'clock, this is so horrible, isn't it? Since 10 o'clock, there's absolutely nothing going on. Okay? I expected this over here. I hope I can get this pin to work. No, shoot. I don't know why I can't get these tools to work. Choose a pin color. Purple? No. November 10, um, Veterans Day was on Saturday in the U.S., so we expected most of the big traders took off Thursday afternoon, and um, they expected the light trading, so they, they're gone, okay? Um I really miss that highlighter tool. You can see these the blue arrows to the left. That was Friday, a nice run there. Anyway, that's the uh, that's the Agena add-on tool. Okay, thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. Agena traders or brokers? Uh, no, no, they're just only software providers. Uh, just software providers. Shalindra. I love that name. Okay, so they're just software providers, platform providers. You're most welcome. All right, let me get back to the program. Good. Now, let's get started. Number one, we look at the charts in an all-encompassing point of view. Price action, price oscillator linkage between the markets okay so right now I beat the drum every single rooster call telling people understand gold is moving on the US dollar forget about every all the fear tactics saying gold's gonna shoot to two thousand dollars forget all that gold is moving on the US dollar it will move on geopolitical events but as the geopolitical events lesson then gold is totally dependent on how the US dollar is moving okay that's what I'm talking about market linkage when I mentioned that stock rig which is a deep offshore oil drilling uh, company that is positive correlation 
to the price of crude. As crude moves, rig moves in the same direction. Gold has negative correlation. If US dollar moves up, gold moves down. Okay. Now we only have one hour here today, so understand that anything I present to you, you must test in simulation any new concepts, and understand I'm only sharing a small part of an overall structured trading approach. However, and this is good, I'm showing you something that you can immediately test. Okay, so what is momentum trading? Momentum trading is the art of spotting a market ready to move, selecting a trade, entering the trade with confidence now, a quiet confidence, and utilizing predetermined exit points. Momentum trading builds off a firm understanding of support and resistance along with known areas price is attracted toward moving. Now that's important. Let me repeat that. Momentum trading builds off a firm understanding of support and resistance along with known areas price is attracted toward moving. I'm trying to tell you something here. There are benchmarks on the chart that the big traders work with, and we can identify that. All right, we are trading directionally up or down. We are riding the price wave rather than reacting to what might happen, and we're certainly not guessing. This is usually accompanied by a price oscillator, and it's used for intraday and short-term trading, holding over a few days or weeks even. Today we're going to talk about day trading. Now, intraday is going to use the daily chart for the big picture and use a short-term chart for tactical entries. As a general rule, the more volatile the market, the smaller the time frame. If the markets are not moving that much, well, then I might back up and say, well, okay, what's going on with the five-minute chart? It is so slow, and we are staring right at the tree. Can we back this up and say, is anything happening? And so then we look at a five-minute chart or maybe a 15-minute chart. Okay, But if we have a market that's actually moving, we want an activity-based chart, and that's going to be your... Uh, I use range bars, but it can be a volume chart, it can be a tick chart, okay? Whatever shows activity where you can see that price is moving. Now markets move up, down, and sideways, and if the market is sideways, we are greatly challenged unless the range is large. So it is imperative, uh, imperative to find moving markets. And this means ES futures traders must expand their horizon at times to other futures showing movement. Now I know there's people that all they want to do is trade the ES. I understand that. But you saw from the chart I just showed of today's action, if it's not moving, you either are extremely disciplined and you're not taking a trade or you're getting really frustrated. And I tend to get a little frustrated if things are not working, uh, not moving, I should say. So what I like to do is say, okay, well, great. It doesn't want to move. What's crude doing? What's gold doing? Are bonds moving? In other words, the confidence is that your approach to the market is so robust that it doesn't really matter if you're trading ES or you're going to trade Russell 2000 or you're going to trade soybeans. Yeah, you can day trade soybeans. Or you're going to anything else. The, the, the bottom line is, is your market moving? Now, to identify trend, I like to bracket price with trend lines on a daily chart and the intraday chart. And understand that price will just bang back and forth between the price trend lines. Okay? Very... Very highly technical concept here. Price will bang back and forth between the trend lines. Okay. Um, now this is an older chart here, but it, it serves the purpose beautifully. Look at the sideways channel. Now, I got some signals firing off there, and if you look down at the bottom, it says, "Rhyme short master." When we get a lot of signals, it's a cluster, and it's it's giving you the bias that look. 
like a battering ram, this thing wants to go down, and sure enough, eventually, boom, it goes down. But, the, but looking back at the chart, when we box up that price action, then we are not, uh, you know, we're, we're not just spinning our wheels because in a tight range sideway market, by the time you enter, they will take it up against you. And I always advocate that you should um, um, let this tight range resolve itself. This happens to be a daily chart here, not, a, not an intraday chart. This happens to be a daily chart. We already know, just by visual, the larger trend is down, right? So, very good. Here we break this into the 10 range bar chart. Now, if you're not familiar with range bars, the 10 range bar chart will only print a price bar if price has moved the range of 10 ticks. If it was a 20 range bar, then the price bar has to move within the range of, of 20 ticks. That means, for example, on the, on the 10, it could go up seven and then down three from the previous price bar. Well, it's moved 10 range, so it will print the bar. When the market's really moving, you're just going to see some solid bars, one after another. And I like the range bars as just a personal preference because every single time I put in the protect a stop, I always know approximately what my stop's going to be on every single trade. So I, I prefer that. Um, I think a problem trying to trade a three-minute or a five-minute chart is you get this thrust of activity, and then all of a sudden the bar prints, and you know, wow, that's a big price bar. And sure enough, you get in the trade because you got the signal, but then price retraces because the it moves so much in five minutes, and it, it price doesn't go straight up. It tends to retrace a little bit. So I prefer activity-based charts, and I've used for years the tick chart, okay, and volume, but I've just settled on range bars because for me it just price is telling me, okay, I'm ready to move. So in other words, I think price is showing me it's proving itself. It proves itself it wants to move in a certain direction. Okay? All right. So the CL chart in front of you, clearly you can see it has movement. We must have movement. Okay. Now last week, this I want to really dwell on how to pick a market. Last week... On one day, we were looking at this. We trade in the morning in a, in a trading room. And that trading room is only for people that have gone through the course, okay? Because we're there to trade, not to talk about what color is an indicator on the chart. We're, we're there to trade. So it was so slow in the ES. We, I mean, we're watching several markets, but so slow in the ES. And I looked at the daily chart, and I saw that the entire range was $387.50. Now, we're using a 10-range bar chart. So, it's one price bar can travel a range of 10 ticks, $125. Now, if we're going to use a confirmation price bar, meaning a second bar to confirm that the first bar is actually the trigger is we got a trigger, now let's prove it. Okay, it proved it, let's go. Well, theoretically, we could have used up $250 before we even entered the trade. That means there's only $137.50 of potential profit. And that's not much. That's, not, that's too small for the day trader. Okay, so the bottom line, find markets with a larger range find markets that are moving. All right, so I do believe trend lines can help spot 
trading channels. Remember, it's up, down, or sideways. So a sideway channel, I like to mark it as no-go rule. In day trading, generally speaking, $200 or less should be avoided. Now, eventually, yes, that sideway channel is broken, and then you're probably saying, gosh, I could have got in earlier. Well, yeah, you could, but history shows you it's just banging up and down in a tight range. Don't worry about getting in at the exact perfect entry. Okay, get rid of that thought. You're looking for probability. What, you know, my probability increases if the sideway channel breaks. Otherwise, sure, I get in, and by the time I get out, or, or by the time I'm in the trade, it either reverses or simply does nothing. It does nothing. And when I say does nothing, it might do nothing for an hour or more. So, especially new traders, understand you have to have no-go rules. And for me, marking the sideway channel has been um, a great improvement to financial health. How about that? It stops you from doing, you know, revenge trading. It stops you from getting frustrated. You can still get frustrated, but at least you don't follow through with the trade. All right. Understand that trend line drawing is an art, not a science. Therefore, screen time. So here's the 10 range bar CL. Okay. And you can see that just by drawing this, um, oh, I think I found a tool here. Maybe this works. No? No? No. I really miss not having the tool. You can see that by drawing this, um, hang on, the trend line, every time we hit the top of the trend line, we tend to, to drop. So I, I do find them beneficial. Spotlight arrow. Not doing it. Sorry about that. Over to the left on that 10 range bar chart, I've highlighted a sideway channel. Now, that sideway channel went over an hour just sideways and then suddenly broke out. Well, we have a way to trade that, absolutely. Support and resistance in momentum trading is huge. Again, we want to learn to identify probable areas price wants to touch over and over again. Let me introduce the concept of an oscillator. Everyone loves oscillators, right? Because it, it helps confirm what you intuitively think is going to happen if you study price. Okay? So, for example, in my course, we did not introduce the oscillator until the third hour because I want to convince people you can read the price chart. You can understand where price is likely to move. Okay? So then when we add the oscillator, all this does is it helps provide a trigger point for entry. All right? This is what most traders look like when they're trying to figure out which oscillator should they use. Okay? Remember the story of the blind man and the elephant each one holding a different part of the element, elephant. And of course, each one describes a different, they're feeling something different, right? So in our case, the first guy might be saying, oh, this is this MACD, I'm sure this is MACD, it's the best, it's got to be the best. The next one says, no, no, RSI, I know this RSI is the best. Percent R, Bollinger Band, expensive proprietary. That's my favorite, expensive proprietary. These people that have convinced you that they have got something that is so good, you know, an indicator so good. And the truth is, uh, in moving markets, everything works, okay? In moving markets, everything works. 
In slow markets, everything is challenged. Remember that. So in the beginning years, I used stochastics, MACD, Williams percent R, and RSI. I, in the beginning, was a position trader. I threw the Bollinger Bands on there. And it's really easy at night when you are not in the heat of the battle and you're just examining the chart and you've got all the time in the world and you can look and say, okay, well, my stochastics is agreeing, my MACD says go, uh, the William Person R says go, the RSI says go, and hey, I'm coming off of a Bollinger Band and yeah, I think that this is, uh, everything's lined up for this position trade, okay? Unfortunately, in an active market in day trading, you do not have that luxury. Day trading is about reacting because everything happens fast. So at present, I use one indicator after years of trading and my desire to simplify. So I use the Commodity Channel Index, also called the CCI. Here's an important understanding I just mentioned. In a strong momentum market, all price oscillators work. So I'm telling you, everything works. I gave a talk one time, and I threw up a chart, and I mean, I literally pulled this out of my head. I put a 7 moving average and a 21 moving average, and I said, take all trades when the 7 crosses the 21. Long or short, if the 7 crosses 21, you do it, move in that direction. Guess what? In a strong moving market, it works wonderfully. Everything works. In a tight range market, all price oscillators, including the most expensive proprietary oscillator that's available, is going to lose its predictive value. So. It's just one more reason to monitor several markets looking for momentum, okay? Now, what's the CCI? Well, this is a commodity channel index. It's a price oscillator created by Donald Lambert. I met Mr. Lambert. In a moving market, the CCI is shown to lead price. Now, don't take my word for it. You need to verify, so I'm going to show you. John Murphy has a book called Technical Analysis of the Financial Markets. And here we are, page 239. He spends about half a page talking about the CCI. Importantly, the last sentence on the page, notice that the CCI turns before prices at each top and bottom. I guess that's the second to the last sentence. So what we have here now is a momentum indicator. It's reading the momentum and giving you a bias for where price is going or where it is expected to go. That is very important. Okay. It's a price oscillator. All you need to know is that we are comparing price with a simple moving average over a selected time span. Mr. Lambert suggested a 20-day period. Others have modified Lambert's suggestion for intraday use using a 14, a 6, and a 5 period. Now, before you just jump into this, I want you to appreciate I have worked with the CCI for years. I had to convince myself this indicator really worked. It's a free indicator in your chart package. Okay. But when I say a lot of screen time, I spent an entire year. I'd sit in front of the market for all the trading hours, right, U.S. trading hours. And even after sitting there for one year, I printed off the paper, and I took paper and pencil and ruler, and I said, okay, my entry would be here. What did price do? Okay. This is the only way I could convince myself that this thing really worked. Because if it was so simple and I can react the way it appeared to be simple, then you know it becomes almost like a video game. You know, you it's you got the signal, 
take the trade. Boom. In fact, one time I took a train ride, a very scenic train ride in Mexico, about six or seven hours, going through this big, huge canyon, vast canyon, three times as large as the U.S. Grand Canyon. Beautiful. So on the way down, headed toward the Pacific, oh, I took in the sights. On the way back, I'm looking at my charts. I had brought them with me. This is how I got to love the CCI. Now, how do you calculate it? Well, you don't worry about it. Most software platforms have this totally automated. They all do, I should say. You simply define the period. They are all set with a default of 20. I'm going to show you the calculation. You can study this on your own time when we get the recording available. All I want you to know is this is a visual method of trading. The CCI is plotted on a histogram. The zero line represents major support and resistance. The 100 and 150 line represent minor support and resistance. So here we go. Here's this Agena chart. And I've got the zero line. I have the plus 100. That's minor support and resistance. The plus 150 line, minor support and resistance. And then anything 200 or above we call extremes. Okay. So if we have the CCI over that zero line, about five or six bars, then we have an upward bias. If we have it below the zero line, five or six bars, we have a downward bias. And then again, you've got minus 100, minor support and resistance, minus 150, and extremes at minus 200. Your 50 CCI at 150 besides Bollinger has me over 80% win rate last 12 months. So grateful. Wow, Brian, thank you for that. Appreciate that comment. All right. Trend, diagonal trend line break. This is something you can immediately test. Very powerful, auspicious. Start drawing from the plus or minus 150 line. A very simple concept I'll show you. Um, it works. The diagonal trend line break is a wonderful tool. So for intraday use, you go into your indicators, you change that default from 20 to 14. Smaller time frames in moving markets with a good range. Okay. So if you don't want to use range bars, say all you do is say, no, no, I want to use something else. That's fine. I traded for years using the 512 tick chart on Euro and on the Russell 2000 and on crude. No problem. I'm not here to cram anything down your throat. You've got to be really comfortable with this day trading environment, big time. And if for some reason you're being internally led, no, I want volume charts, or no, I want tick charts, or yes, I want range bar charts, you follow that voice. Okay. Now, I, I used to say trade the rush hour instead of all day, but in 2017, the morning rush hour is few and far between. Okay, it's really it's really awful. Normally, we could just trade this thing in the morning, about an hour and a half to two hours, be done for the day. It's not that easy anymore. It's not that easy. But the the message here is, generally, we get more we have more participation in those first couple of hours. We also notice that there's a pickup at a certain time in the afternoon. Okay. The reason all this is going on is because the people who create the volume, the guys on the, you know, the canyons of Wall Street, the guys that are, have the house in the Hamptons and they've got the fancy cars and they've got the fancy watches and all this and that, these guys are all working together. So if we know when they trade, how they trade, then 
we stand a lot better chance we can say that we believe our probabilities are increased. Okay, this diagonal trend line break, which I'll show you on the chart, um, gosh, 50% of the trades are accomplished with this. I have four other CCI patterns I use and teach, along with other robust setups, filters, and nuances. But here's something you can immediately start testing. So, key point to remember, and I'll show you the chart, draw trend lines from plus or minus 150, better trades are in markets showing momentum, and a 14-period CCI for intraday, any time frame, activity-based or below 60 minutes. So here we go right here. Here's crude. Okay. Overnight, look, tight sideways. I call that probably uh, untradeable. Okay. Probably about a, it looks like about a $225 range or something. Untradeable, untradeable, forget it. Um, it finally breaks out. Okay. The diagonal trend line breaks. I've drawn a diagonal trend line break, and then I got a vertical line, and that shows you where the trade would be entered. How simple is this? Diagonal trend line break the first one. Up we go. Diagonal trend line break the second one. Your second arrow on the price chart. Up we go. Okay. Now you got to remember each each bar here is traveling a range of ten ticks. So the day trader, the secret to day trading is not winning big. The secret is winning small and winning often. String together a series of short duration high profit trades. That's what we do. Okay. Now, diagonal trend line break, and you see that first arrow going down. That's a that's a sell signal. Well, then we find out if you were trading at that hour, that's eight o'clock at e evening. Then we find out, wait a minute, I got in, it didn't do anything. It turned into a sideway motion. That's fine. As a general rule, we like to believe that we're not going to get more than two losing trades in a row. Now, you've got to test that and make that your statistic. But this is what we generally find. If, if you've got two losing trades in a row, there's one of two things going on. Either the market is not moving or you, the trader in command, are distracted. Okay. So, again, everywhere there's a vertical line was where the trade would be entered. Nothing is 100%, but this thing is pretty darn good. So when, when I read that what you said, Brian, 80% win rate, um, I'm not surprised, quite honestly. I appreciate you mentioning that. And of course, everyone trades differently. You're not going to trade exactly like me. I can show you. I can put you in that real-time room. You can see me take some trades. But everyone has their own quirk. And I always say entries are easy and exits are the most difficult. All right, so diagonal trend line break with trend. Draw it from the plus or minus 150 line. Use a confirmation price bar and let that close unless the trend is super strong. Now, all I'm saying is if you get the signal, let one more price bar print. That's all I'm saying. Counter trend, only after you've mastered trend trading. There's a reason they say the trend is your friend. So intraday, long. Place the stop below the trigger price bar. Let's look at this again. Intraday, I'm going to go long. Place that protective stop below the trigger price bar or the prior price bar to the trigger bar. Whoever is lower now, if you do this using a 20 range bar, I'm sorry, a 10 range bar chart, then you could have a stop of, say, $200.
some people aren't willing to do that. And I maintain anyone who's trying to use a six tick or an eight tick stop on crude, um, good luck. Or gold. Oh, gold. Mm -mm. Some instruments must have room to move. Absolutely. If you're going to go short, place your stop above the trigger bar or the prior price bar to your trigger, whoever is higher. And what you're going to find is an absolutely incredible protect a stop. Yes, you're going to get stopped out sometime, but by and large, it's going to keep you out of the noise where they're trying to either decide where they're taking the market or they're trying to just hit the retail trader as soon as the retail trader gets in. You know, I traded back when it was Russell 2000 was the TF. Boy, I entered a trade one time and I got a five tick stop. I mean slippage, you know, five tick slippage. In other words, I enter the trade and immediately, immediately, I'm down 50 bucks a contract. I, I called my broker. I said, hey, Patrick, you got a problem here, man. And I, he says, no, no, no. He says, no one's trading the TF anymore. And then I looked at the volume, right? I thought, oh, I'm, I'm like the only guy on the tennis court, and I hit the ball, and then I got to run over to hit it. So if, if there's not enough volume, yeah, they're going to slap you. When you I, I use market orders, and market orders are fine in moving markets or markets. You know, I'm, ex, I'm willing to accept a one-tick slippage or, Russell, or in, in, uh, the NQ. I'll accept a one or two tick slippage, okay? No problem, because I'm going for more. But man, that TF, five tick, and uh, now we've going to the RTY. So the volume has increased tremendously because they lowered the, um, they lowered the. Uh, margin and now more um, and the data fees I should say that I'm sorry they lowered the data fees from ice to the CME and now more people are trading the RTY so it's it's wonderful again when it's moving now profit considerations there's nothing wrong with profit targets I think that new traders and small accounts should use profit targets that's my opinion basically you decide now, I can get pretty married to my profit targets. An example, I think two weeks ago, I'm going initially for eight ticks on, uh, I don't know what it was, crude maybe, crude or uh, gold. Well, it went up seven ticks, and then it proceeded to just absolutely drop. So anyone going for five ticks or six ticks, or seven ticks, that's a winning trade. But for Martin Rhymes going for eight as my initial, it was a losing trade. Now, on the NQ, we typically go for 15 ticks and 30 ticks. Okay, A lot of times on crude, we go for eight and 30. But if the market's not giving it to you, it's not going to give it to you. And the market's always the boss. So, I have a friend named Charlie. I call him Three Tick Charlie. Charlie manages money for other people. And Charlie enters trades and exits trades three ticks. Does a tremendous amount of volume, but all he's after is three ticks. He is the absolute happiest trader I have ever met. Phenomenal win rate. He's not making any demands of the market. Three ticks. I'm out. Appreciate it. Well, I go for the bigger, okay, because it feels really great, doesn't it? But I want to pay the light bill with the first one. So I will go eight ticks, and then I let my runner take off. Or sometimes I'll think, you know, this market is so slow, uh, I'll take everything, for example, on the NQ, all in, 
all out, 15 ticks, thank you. And of course, that's the day when it just runs and runs and runs. So entries are super easy. Exits are what really challenges you. And I haven't even talked about fear and greed and ego. Right? Now you can use the CCI if it starts turning back at the 150 line headed towards zero. That's your first indication, hey, this trade might be losing momentum. If it crosses the 100 line towards zero, you should probably get out. If you know you've got price approaching a channel line and we expect the line to hold, maybe you ought to consider taking a profit. All right. Here is an example of the trailing stop. Now, this happens to be built into this uh, Agena Trader add on. Quite convenient. Um, you know, what you see here is that we are following the market up, and as the market starts to turn, um, boom, it takes us out. So where I've got that arrow that says trailing stop, just follow that up and see how it stayed in. And that stop is designed to where if it touches the blue line, you're still in the trade. It has to, it has to close against the blue line. Okay? All right. Here's 10 range crude. Is this a repeat? Um, I'm not sure what I want to show with that. Now, what I've shown you, and I'll show you live charts, works on any instrument, on any chart time frame. And our, our mantra, if an action repeats, we can trade it. So day trading, use activity-based charts rather than time charts. I think that's going to help you out. Create the no-go rules. You're not interested in taking a trade if the range is around $200. If it's $225, I probably am not interested in it. Okay. I, I internally tell myself I must let price resolve the issue because the oscillator is going to be moving and it's going to give you a signal, it's going to chop you up if the price is simply not moving. So let price resolve the chop. Momentum traders believe they're in for the long haul, taking a series of con trades and converting to cash quickly. Runners are for longer term moves. Trade multiple contracts rather than pinning your hopes on a single contract. Paper trade prior to using any real money. And understand your ego in your mind and trade with that weakness in your mind. If you know that you have a tendency to kick yourself if you see a profit go into a loss, then you need to make an adjustment there. Right? Start using targets. I'll never forget the day I made $700 on the euro before U.S. market opened. So I thought, well, hey, I'll make it $1,000 and I'll quit. So the U.S. market opened. It was a horrible day, at least for me. I'm sure other people had a great day. And of the $700 banked, I think I end up with either 350 or minus 350 right? Because my ego got so involved, I had to make $1,000. And any time I lost money, I now had to make that money up and make the thousand dollars, right? So eventually the market beats this out of you, but you got to be very, very attuned to the weakness that's just part of all of us, right? An ego. I've had a guy tell me at a convention at a trader talk I gave, he looks at me, just smile, just big old smile. Martin, I just can't take myself out of a trade. Okay, well, he's okay with it, apparently. So day trading is fast action, fast profits, or fast losses. You must react. You cannot afford to stick around looking at the chart and saying, well, okay, um, I've got my volume here, and I see the dome is showing this, and, and I see that these three indicators are all in agreement. No, 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 no. you got to react. And I believe in trading with clear charts. If you linger, you're going to miss the trade. Day trading is not position trading. The focus on day trading is knowing you have a trading edge over time. 
okay? In a sense, it's like cards, playing cards. So the day trading is never about the result of an individual trade. It's never about the results of an individual day of trading, okay? It is never about the results of a week of trading. You're going to absolutely just get so upset with yourself if you demand this kind of perfection, okay? The number one concern of day trading is what does your system look like over time? And I would consider three month minimum. All day traders experience drawdown if markets simply are not moving. This is why we do not trade equity index futures the first two weeks of August. It's absolutely too tough. America's on vacation, Europeans are on vacation, okay? There's no volume. So plan your vacation to be off the first two weeks of August, right? That's the worst time in the year. Um, the day trading mind, it's a numbers game. You get in, you get out, taking a series of trades rather than pinning your hopes on a huge trade of the century. Ego makes the new day tr traders look for the trade of the day. Experienced traders know that we are the mouse under the banquet table looking for crumbs during intraday trading noise. Got it? So, intraday we see that price runs up and down. We know the benchmarks the professionals use. We follow the professionals. The day trader has trend and counter trend strategies capturing these moves. The more you trade, the more your system has a chance to prove itself as long as you trade your plan as perfectly as possible. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like playing cards at the casino, right? You, you, you try to play blackjack and you do the same thing. And I saw a guy, an acquaintance, in four hours come away with $1,500. $1,500 in four hours, playing cards. They try to give him drinks. He says, I'll take coffee. Thank you. What did he do? He had a system, and he knows over time his system will prevail. It took him four hours, but he walked away a winner. Now, most people fail at day trading because they forget to think like an elephant. An elephant gets mighty big eating peanuts, and the day trader capturing a series of trades and then leaving the game, waiting for the next trade, is happy, even if he misses the trade of the century. Now, there, there, there's a lot of wisdom in that. So people blow up when making money because the money came too easy and the traders lose self-control. So the remedy is trade as mechanical as possible, executing your trade as perfectly as possible according to your plan. Start with a small number of contracts and build regardless of your account size. Okay. Very important, if your broker has imposed limits like a daily risk level or you tell the broker, look, I don't want to risk more than X amount of dollars, you cannot rely on that as a stop loss order. Right? If a fast market can blow through that. Protective stops are very personal. You got to think about Goldilocks and the three bears. Right? This one's too hot, this one's too cold, this one's just right. So your stop has to speak to you. Base your stop on a mechanical chart action rather than emotion. And I talked to you about three tick Charlie. I do believe you need to log the time of day for your trades and you need to log the day of the week. No secret that newbies, new people, make money in the morning and lose it over lunch. That's no secret. No secret that Monday and Friday are slower than any other days of the week, you know, especially in the summer. Okay, so I think the day trading game is best for visual traders who can react with a quiet confidence knowing losses are part of the game clean charts for faster decisions. The day trader is no different than a professional poker player. It's not each hand, but a series of hands played which determine the outcome. All right.
what's the time here? Um, about one hour. Let me quickly look at some charts. All right. So here we have, I, now I have the ability to write some arrows here. This is last, I think this is um, the ninth. Beautiful signal here. Um, let me just go through this. This is one that we trade I haven't told you about. This is called the horizontal trend line break. Basically, if you get it over three bars, draw your line. If you have it just horizontal for at least three bars, and uh, you know you come down and kind of touch that a little bit, or make like you're going to touch it. When you finally break it, boom! It's it's a signal. Now, this particular uh, strategy I've got here is also looking. It's got 16 decision points. So this one purposely did not take the trade because he did what? He saw this, and he says, uh-oh, this doesn't look good. So I'm going to override the signal. That's what he said. What's this? Diagonal trend line break. We're at 150. Check. Draw that line. Diagonal trend line break. Here's your signal here. There were some other things going on in the chart that made this thing also want to move up, but here's our CCI signal. Now, we, here's the yellow line saying we printed enough bars above the zero line, so he gave a second signal. Nice. Nice. It's uh, from... 10 o'clock until now, 1.30, nothing going on in the ES. Take the crude. All right. We've been at this big, big, huge battle at $57 on crude. Epic battle. And it's just going up and down about 25 cents. Looks like they finally broke it today and it fell down. And then, of course, they quickly take it right back up. But crude's trying to do this. 57 has been a real, real battle line. 57, and then it goes like a little bit up, a little bit down, but it's been really quite sideways for a while. Um, here's diagonal trend line break here, and you see your signal here. Here's diagonal trend line break here, and you see your signal here, right? This is gorgeous over here. This is wonderful, beyond wonderful. Okay. Could you show me how to adjust the 50 EMA and the 34 EMA in the Gina Trader for soft and hard stop? I can't find them in the setup escort. Uh, let me do that on the side with you, Pascal, rather than in this, in this uh, presentation. About 57 mark, next up is 512. Okay, Jay, thank you for that. Not only 512, but we're also, we consider it will be a chart event if we ever pass 5750. So keep that number in your mind too. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Over to the left on this particular chart, you'll see that we've got the trade analyzer. And I look at some markets with a 10 range bar and some with a 20. I look at the NQ, for example, with a 20 because 10 is just too um, too small when your index is almost 6,000 so or over 6,000. So, okay, here's the danger one more time. The danger, this is a 10 range bar of a tight sideway market. You're not going anywhere. You're just not going anywhere. So you need to avoid it. Now, if I were to make this a 20 range bar chart, oh, my goodness. 
Now suddenly I see some something a little bit different. So I believe the 20 range bar chart is a lot easier to trade than the 10. The 10, by the time you enter, it can just turn right around, whack you out. Okay? So I would prefer to trade the uh, the 20 for the NQ. Bonds, I look at a 5, a 5 range bar. Let me take a look at the euro real quick. That's 20. I want to back this down. Oh my gosh, look at this beautiful signal here. What is that? Diagonal trend line break. Hello. Go long. Hello. You think you can use this kind of a system? It's so simple. Um, let's go to the 10 range bar. Diagonal trend line break. Hello. Let me get this. And there we are. Hello. Boy, I love that. By the way, if you are a European or Asian trader, Man, you've got to start loving these markets at 3 o'clock in the mornings, 3 o'clock Eastern. Incredible action a lot of times. Okay, a Unitrader software can work with, on with which brokers? Well, in the U.S., um, there's a broker called Halifax. There's other brokers that have access to it. Um, I think Halifax put a dedicated man on it. Um, AMP has it. Oh, is DeCarly? I, you know, I don't know anything about uh, other than um, if this is the same person. She's a uh, very good person but um, and I don't know her personally but I know of her work I don't know if she is working with the Gina trader or not so what typically has to happen is the Gina trader has to have what's called an API which will handshake with the broker if you are using for example uh, rhythmic data if you get rhythmic data from say uh, De Carly and then yes, you can certainly use um, any broker, okay? Any broker. So um, I'm sure that she could support it. She won't know about it, but that's okay. The Genetrader people have excellent uh, training materials. And that's what I use. I'm using the Rhythmic on the Genetrader. Uh, Infinity uh, not yet, Jay. I've tried to make that a marriage, but the um, the API is not there yet. So, what a person could do is have the if they have the Infinity account, is have the Infinity order entry up, and then um, watch the Agena Trader using, say, Rhythmic and then enter the orders with the uh, infinity front end. Uh, the, I like the infinity front end. Let's see here. Um, what's the advantage of a unit trade over the charting packages? Stevie, it really gets down to um, what I like about it, a personal choice. What I like about the unit trader is if I get a signal, okay, then I can immediately, let's say if I was going to go buy, okay, if I hit buy, Immediately, there's a setup. Okay, so this one says, uh, okay, first st stop 50 bucks, and then I'm going to have a runner, and the runner can go in indefinitely, right? The runner is then going to trigger off of my trailing stop, and my trailing stop might be, uh, uh, you know, this uh, what I showed you earlier. 
or it might be uh, we're doing a deal now where the 50 EMA, if it's hit, then the stop will immediately go to the 34 EMA. So you're not going to be taken out until price hits the 30, closes through the 34 EMA. Otherwise, right now, if, if this was, you know, taking this trade, it would say go long. It'll take the first one out at 50. Now that's the euro. I typically typically go for eight, okay? But it'll it'll take the first one off at 50, and then it will run with a runner. And you know, if it's one of those glorious days which people hope and pray for, wonderful. It's going to capture it until price breaks, uh, you know, closes through the 50. Or if I'm using um, this guy, then it'll. Um, get out according to the blue line. So in addition to having this all one-stop shop, which is, is really great, um, they've got it even where you can allocate as money management. You can say, okay, of my entire account, I want to allocate X amount X percent for my day trades. So let's just say that if I'm just going to throw a number out there, let's just say that if the account was at ten thousand dollars, and your allocation was to put, um, let's say, oh twenty-five percent of your account on a trade. Okay. Well, then as that account builds, it's going to. Um, still keep 25%, but it will automatically increase per the account size. If you go below 10,000, it's going to keep 25%, but it will be decreasing the number of orders, the number of contracts. Okay? So in that way, it just takes one less uh, responsibility off of you so that you can focus on the day trading. All of this is user defined. You define the parameters. Okay. Um, yes, well, not CQG, Paul, but the uh, rhythmic and AMP. All right, Mike. Um, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. So listen, let me let me. Uh, I'll take any other questions or look at any other charts, but let me wrap this up by reminding you that. Let me get this up. If you really want to know how I think on a consistent basis, then I'd like you to think about that rooster call. Okay. Because a lot of people don't realize these these relationships. A lot of people don't realize if the U.S. dollar gets really strong and moves up, that could be the reason why the grain market went down. Why is that? Because it makes the grains more expensive, right? U.S. grains on the world market. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things I put in that rooster call, and I just like sharing. Um, as far as my next live session, let me go to this. On this uh, just day trade, So what I'm going to do is I've got the videos recording available now from the October session. I'll hold another course live November 27th to the 29th, and I'll be using the Agena charts. But the recordings get you to start learning, and then you sit in the live session. No extra charge because you already bought the course. And you're taking the time now to educate yourself for when we really get hot and heavy trading in January, right? Because you're going to have to have some time to look at the material, 
test the material, and then you know get that confidence level going up. So the slow period between Christmas and New Year's is perfect for that. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Larry. I'm going to go ahead and call this a day. I don't see any other questions. And I want to thank everyone for being here. I appreciate you being here. And I will look forward. If you want to write me, I'll put my email in here. Let's see here. Martin at hit the mark. Trading.com. That's how you reach me. You'll get a recording of this webinar probably, probably no later than Wednesday, maybe Tuesday, maybe Tuesday. But um, if you signed up for it, you should be able to get it. Otherwise, if you write me, I'll make sure you get it. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate that. Okay, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Shalindra. Everyone have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye now.